Okay, there's just nothing quite like the solid gold sound of the UCLA marching band. Welcome to the sixth annual Champed Up student welcome event. As you can see, we're doing things a little differently this year, uh, virtually actually, but just because we're virtual doesn't mean we're gonna have any less fun. We have great interviews for you guys today, student athletes, coaches, and it's UCLA, so chances of a celebrity stopping by are, are pretty good. Uh, you could also win gift cards today, Ralph's gift card, so make sure you're watching the whole time because your name could get called to win a gift card or some UCLA swag. And make sure that you hashtag champed up and tag at UCLA The Den to follow along. Now, without further ado, let's introduce our new UCLA athletic director, Martin Jarman. Bruins, welcome to Westwood, champed up. I'm excited for you to join our Bruin community. You're coming at a wonderful time as this is the number one public institution in the country. I will tell you the next four years or five or six years will be the best years of your life. And such a key component of that experience is gonna be coming to athletic games and supporting your peers, our student athletes as they compete. Whether it's Pauley Pavilion, Easton Stadium or at the Rose Bowl. I guarantee you those will be the moments you remember. So I encourage you when we're able to come back and be together at games to get your den pass, get your friends, your roommates, and be a part of the action that is our college athletics program. So I'm excited, have a great year, can't wait to meet you when we can all get together. Go Bruins. Wow, even though Martin just got here, you can tell this guy is already fitting in in Westwood. Such good energy, just like the energy you're going to see at the UCLA sporting events. Now, for those of you who don't know, every time you sit in the student section at a UCLA game, you're a part of the den. The den, Bruins, Bears, you get it. are back you guys will be able to get a den pass which gets you into ucla football games and men's basketball games and to get into the 25 other sports that ucla has you just need to bring your bruin card so it's going to be as easy as walking down from your dorm to attend a game and uh, one of those games is basketball so let's kick things off with our head basketball coach mick cronin All right, so for those of you who don't know, UCLA's basketball program is kind of historic. So being the head coach is kind of a big deal. Getting to talk to one is an even bigger deal. So we're getting to talk to head coach Mick Cronin. Mick, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Danielle. How are you? I'm so good. So I have so many questions I want to ask you. But first things first, last season started off kind of slow, and then things got hot. UCLA was the hottest team in the country, and then the shutdown happened. Can you kind of walk us through that whirlwind? 
Oh, it was a wild experience, you know, from uh, – we seemed like we couldn't lose a game. Uh, we had two seasons in one. We were, we were trying to grow up. Then we grew up real quick, and uh, the guys did unbelievable jobs. We're on a big roll. And then uh, we head to Vegas for the Pac-12 tournament, and we wake up, and I got to tell the guys we're going home, no tournament. And then by the time we get home, the season's over. So it was just a wild time. But even then, you know, none of us knew that we wouldn't be back on campus for such a long time. So uh, it, was, it, was, it was wild. It seems like a long time ago now. How excited are the guys to finally be able to get back into Poly when they can? Well, like everybody else, you know, just trying to get back to, uh, get back to normal, right? Get your life back. So that, but, you know, the guys are chasing dreams. But uh, we left the season on such a high note, feeling so good about our team. Uh, that, that the guys, they, they want it back badly. Uh, so we're just looking forward to, to being around each other again and getting back to practice, you know, being a, you know, and then hopefully everybody out there can, you know, be, be at our games in Pauly, you know, <laughs> sooner than later, that'll be an awesome experience. Right. I can I definitely speak for the fans that we can't wait to see you guys back in Pauly. I want to take you back to a game last year, Arizona. We win the game. You send the players into the den, the student section. What made you do that? Like, what was the feeling there? Well, I think that it's important that uh, our guys know that you know, we represent the, the student body. You know, we're the school's team. We're not a club team. You know, sometimes because of the media coverage at, at the high level, you, you can almost feel like a pro team, so to speak. But we're not. You know, we represent the, 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 the number one school in the country. So... You know, for us, uh, I, I think it, it's important that you can reiterate that with your team. But uh, when you can celebrate a big win with your students, so make sure they know it, it's a help, huge help to, to have the student body at the game. You know, all your enthusiasm uh, comes from your student section. You know, not, right. not, the people, not the people my age sitting over there, they got a drink in their hand. <laughs> They're not the ones standing and cheering. So we got to have the students. So it was a great, that was a, it was a great week that week to celebrate the Arizona State win uh, in the stands as well as the Arizona win. Right. I mean, you brought up a great point. Home court advantage, probably more important in college basketball than almost any other sport. And how important has the Den been for you? And, and why should these new students want to come be a part of the Den? Uh, well, you got to have fun, right? When you're young, you don't have to worry about things. You can act crazy. You can yell at people. You know, that's the beauty of being in a student section. You can yell all kinds of things. So, <laughs> you know, things they probably wouldn't let you yell at your high school student section. <laughs> so, so now you're in college, you can have a blast. But uh, I think, you know, a big part of going to a school like UCLA is enjoying the, the pageantry that goes around it, right? You have mm -hmm. the probably, you know, we have 11 national championships. So you go to a school where, you know, you're at the most, you have the most historic basketball program of any school in America. So why not enjoy it and have fun with it and hopefully uh, help us win a lot of games. Absolutely. And uh, any last advice for any of these incoming students? Hang in there. You know, it's uh, <laughs> I, I, obviously we're all zooming to death, but uh, we never thought we'd spent yeah. this much time online. I, I know I didn't. I thought you guys would because you're younger, but stay positive. It'll all get back to normal soon. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Coach. Take care. It was great to see you. Thank you, guys. Thanks again to Coach Cronin for joining us. And he's right. You guys create the home court advantage. You're going to have so much fun when you're in the den. We throw confetti after the first basket. We have big heads. We distract the other team's free throw shooters. We have cheers. We have chants. It's just, it's the place to be on game day if you're not actually, you know, playing on the court. Plus, the den is known for some pretty funny shenanigans. In fact, last year at the Arizona game, some of the Den members decided to poke fun at one of our opponents. Let's take a look at the video. This is Arizona's coach, Sean Miller, and he sweats like no one else. So we're all gonna get wet during the game. Sean Miller, do it to me. Sean Miller, he might get tossed. John Higgins saying, be careful or you're going to get tossed here. Sean, they need you. Do not get oh, down. John down. Higgins is really close to giving him that second technique. <laughs> 
I'll get the earlier flight to New Orleans. He can take your oh, place and Sean is now gone. Sean Miller just got ejected. He Two got teams in the game. And if the Bruins end up winning this thing by a point, that's on Sean Miller. I think he was awesome for it. don't think that they look sweaty enough but that's just one person's opinion uh but i can't wait to see what the den has in store for us in the future and the basketball games are not the only thing that happens in poly you can actually go watch ucla gymnastics which is amazing because our gymnastics team is known for their viral floor routines so that brings us to our next guest let's bring in ucla gymnast nia dennis guys our next guest is the Nia Dennis yes Nia Nation uh, let's start with that Nia where did the name Nia Nation come from that's your nickname <laughs> it is my nickname Nia Nation came from the Ohio State Buckeyes winning the football championship in like 2015 and it was always Buckeye Nation and so me growing up as a gymnast I was like oh maybe my brand could be Nia Nation because like gymnastics is very individual so it's like just myself so Nia Nation is what happens <laughs> all right Nia so Try and answer this question. It's going to be a hard one. What, what makes UCLA Gymnastics so special? What made you want to be a part of this team? Um, what makes UCLA Gymnastics so special is the diversity that's on this team. We are all so different, different cultures, different backgrounds. We're all very authentic, authentically real ourselves, and that allows us to perform our best. And we're so fun. We just have fun. We're dancing. We're always interacting with people and each other and just illuminating great energy. Right. And, and speaking of the fun, um, the den, what is the crowd like at these games? How many people come to this? At least we get over 10,000 people to come to these. And it's like, this is the event of the year. People love to come because the student section, the den is, we have the best student section in the nation by far. They come to their meets, they show up, they do our routines, they participate. We go give them high fives. We're just, everybody's so interactive, so fun. And it's just a great time. Awesome. So what is it like when you're performing your routines and you look into the student section? Probably not. Probably not while you're performing. But when you see the students doing your routine with you, what is that like? That is the most exciting feeling in the entire world that people actually take time to learn our routines and then just wait for that one exciting moment just to do it with us or just to have fun. And Wait, do you, do you guys teach it or they just watch you so much and they learn it? Sometimes the den does come in and they'll learn our routines and we'll teach them certain parts so that they could be ready like at the meets. But yeah. Right. Okay. So I told you I was going to try not to fangirl too hard on this interview because I, I love the gymnastics team and I love watching you. Uh, but I did Google you before the interview. And I don't know if you know this, when you Google Nia Dennis, do you know what pops up first? It says Nia Dennis, Beyonce. Oh my God. <laughs> That's what comes up. And it's because of that viral routine you did to the Beyonce music. And it's kind of good company that when you Google your name, it comes up Beyonce. Uh, can you tell us about that routine? Oh my goodness. This routine was so exciting, so fun to create and do um so i'm from i have family in new orleans and every year we go for thanksgiving and they there's this event called battle of the bands and it's really big down there and i major at dancers so i really was inspired by them so i did a routine that was really similar and it was pretty ironic that beyonce came out with that album that was all like marching band music style like drumline style 
So it's right. really exciting to be able to bring some of my home, like some of my own culture into the gymnastics world. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, you also got to perform on Ellen. What was that <laughs> <Yeah>. like? <laughs> that was also very exciting. That was amazing. The best time of my entire life. So many amazing people there in, in the set, in the studio. So, uh, who, is the, who is the celeb that reti- retweeted your routine that like, you were most excited about, maybe? Oh, my goodness. There, <laughs> a lot of them, a lot of people did. But Jada Pinkett Smith, Gabrielle. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, Gabrielle, you did like... <laughs> Steve Harvey, a lot. And there's a lot of great ones. <laughs> um, yeah. So needless to say, Usually Gymnastics, kind of a big deal. Um, the meet is the place to be. You've already said that. Uh, what does it mean uh, for the den? How important is it for you guys to have them there? The den is so important. Like, we have the best student section in the nation, <laughs> hands down. In the Nia Nation. <laughs> <laughs> in the Nia Nation and the Bruin Nation. Um, <laughs> they come, they show up, they show out. They're so supportive, enthusiastic, and really the students make the meet. Like that's, their energy is what we feed off of and that's what helps us do good, do better anyways. Right, and, and I'm a little biased, but I, I love UCLA sporting events, but gymnastics is, is my favorite probably to go to. It's so much fun. All right, Nia, before we let you go, um, any sneak peeks about what routine we might see from you in the future? Uh, <laughs> I have a lot of very good ideas and a lot of things that a lot of people can participate in as well so it's not just me everybody's doing it too okay so everyone needs to be a part of Nia Nation pretty much so uh (laughs) thanks so much Nia and uh go Bruins thank you that's awesome okay Nia so are you ready for rapid fire now I'm ready okay cool uh favorite dining hall (laughs) the nev (laughs) Okay, favorite building on campus? Royce. Uh, favorite UCLA sport other than gymnastics? Uh, football. Okay, but it would be gymnastics. Uh, favorite Westwood spot to eat? BJ's. Okay, we get a Pazuki there? Every Tuesday. <laughs> Every Tuesday? Okay. Uh, number one must-do thing for new students. What do they have to do when they come to Westwood? Oh, they have to go to Jan Steps and look at the beautiful campus. I was going to say go to the gymnastics meet, but yeah. Oh, that too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. (laughs) All right. Thanks so much, Nia. We really appreciate it. We can't wait to see you back in Pauly. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to be there. you guys UCLA gymnastics meets are where it's at they're electric you have to go to one of these meets these girls are amazing and now we'd like to turn it over to our sponsor Ralph's to give out a couple Ralph's gift cards remember we're gonna be giving them away all program long so make sure you're listening drum roll please for our first winners And there they are. Yes, if you have your name on the screen right now, then stand by because you'll be getting a DM from the den to claim your prize. Now, I'm gonna throw it down to San Diego to the voice of the Bruins, Josh Lewin, who's with a special guest who has won just a few Super Bowls. Danielle, thanks a lot. And and what a pleasure to have one of the UCLA greats with us, Troy Aikman. Of course, you know him now from Fox, does an amazing job. He's going to be covering Tom Brady all year, it seems like. And uh, little known fact, last quarterback in New England to have worn number 12 before Tom Brady was our very own Tom Ramsey, which was kind of in the Troy Aikman era, right? I kind of, I mean, it was was (laughs) Tom Ramsey, eventually Troy Aikman. So good to see you, buddy. Uh, And I know you'd like to actually be on campus at some point, too. Uh, it's not happening these days for obvious reasons, but can you tell everybody here just what it meant to you when you got to campus and, and why it was you got to UCLA in the first place? Yeah, you know, I didn't go there right out of high school. My my journey to UCLA was a little bit different. I spent my first two years at the University of Oklahoma and then transferred to, to UCLA there in Westwood. My my three years on campus at UCLA were, were truly magical. Uh, I, I loved everything about it. Uh, athletically, it was everything that I'd hoped that it would be uh, from the perspective of playing football. But my experience as a, as a student uh, was tremendous. And I think one of the one of the great things about that university is the fact that as an athlete, you really are able 
to blend in a, as a student and, and get to experience that side of it. And, and not at all campuses is it like that. So uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed my time there at UCLA. I highly recommend it to anyone who has any interest. And when I look back over uh, my life, really, some of my fondest times were there uh, in Westwood and on campus. You know, obviously, you, you come to campus as a stud quarterback. I would think that you'd be hanging out with the other stud quarterbacks. But, but to hear it told, the offensive line guys were really your best friends when you, when you first got to, to the football field. And that's, that's interesting to me because I, I think it speaks to how if you kind of open your mind, right, when you get to campus and look to your left and look to your right, you never know who your best friends are going to be. Well, that's it. And uh, you meet people from all over the country, all over the world, really. And, and you're right. I, I, I think I showed my, uh, my intellect by hanging out with the offensive line, the, guy, the guys who could take care of me. And matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, I had uh, three or four of those guys who flew in from California here to Dallas uh, for a cookout that I was having and uh, some lifelong relationships that were established during those years there at UCLA. What is a Troy Aikman cookout like these days, and how does it compare to your food intake when you were in Westwood? Uh, well, yeah, it's a lot better than it was. I I, uh, I I do cook myself, but for that particular weekend, I had I brought someone in this uh, this barbecue expert, and and these guys were all offensive linemen that came in, so they're still big. You know, you either go one of two ways when you quit playing football and you're a lineman. You either get a lot bigger or you get a lot smaller. My guys all got a lot bigger. So yeah. uh, we had plenty of food for them. I had some live entertainment and just, just had a blast with them. So when you look at the UCLA students now who obviously are in a very odd time, right? I mean, we, we can feel for them. I mean, nobody loves a pandemic and this is a very odd time to be making new yeah. friends and getting involved. But when there are athletic events to go to, What's so special about it? Because I know you didn't, I mean, you played football, but you went to basketball games. You went and saw your other friends playing other sports. What's the athletic community experience like? I, I think that athletics is a, a vital part of the college experience. You know, I think when I say this, I, I tell my daughters that, and, and I have one who just went off to college. She didn't go to UCLA, but I think that there, there, there's such a bonding that happens and a rallying that occurs on the campus you know, in the fall and going to football games and, and then basketball games in the winter and baseball or whatever it is. I mean, there's a lot of sports, a lot of really great sports uh, at UCLA, teams that have had a great deal of success. And to go with your friends and support the, the teams that are playing and, and for, you know, you think about your high school experience and, and how sports played such a big role in, in, in that. Uh, college is, is that to the next degree. And so I encourage all students, uh, whether you even played in high school or not, to, to rally around these athletic programs, get behind them. I know it means a lot to the, to the athletes. It meant a lot to me. You know, the student section at the UCLA football games when I was playing there at the Rose Bowl. But it, it's, a, it's a big, big part, I think, of the entire experience on campus. And finally, Troy, you know, I'm thinking here, you and I, when, when we were growing up, we're 105 years old now, I believe, both of us. Yeah. But we, uh, we didn't have anything called a personal brand. I mean, that was not a phrase yet. We didn't know that one. But I'm thinking for you, you know, your brand, the way, the way it's kind of unspooled here, you had the UCLA brand, right, which I would think gives you some confidence going to one of the great brands in athletics in the world, the Dallas Cowboys. You take that to the Fox Sports brand, which is, again, just a huge omnipresent thing all across the world. So you've been pretty lucky with that, right? I mean, all of your brands have kind of morphed yeah. into this. But I guess speaking to that, with the UCLA brand, for loss of a better thing I can put my air quotes around, uh, that's big, right? I mean, doesn't that give you some confidence when you go out into the, into the world? There's no question. I think when you get off campus from UCLA and you go into the workforce and you start talking and you interview and you have your resume and they see uh, University of California in Los Angeles, it means a lot. I think uh, everyone, it, it, it's world renowned. People recognize uh, what UCLA represents, the type of students that they accept uh, there on campus. And it goes a long, long way. And, and, and I think that's important. Uh, I, I'm proud. Very proud. I, I don't know anyone who didn't enjoy their experience in college, but I also know that there are those universities that have a little cachet to them 
UCLA being one of them. So I'm very proud uh, when I run into people and I'm visiting with them and they ask me, hey, you know, where did you go to college? Or even if they know that I went to UCLA and we start talking about it, uh, I'm, I'm very open about my experience and very proud to be representing UCLA. There's a lot of fine people uh, who have come from UCLA and you talk about the brand. UCLA is a great brand and I'll tell you, someone else who has a great brand, and that's Terry Donahue. And he represented UCLA with tremendous class, uh, taught me a lot while I was there. And, and, I, and each day, I'll be honest with you, I, I hope that I live up to the standards that Terry Donahue set and really the standards that I learned while I was there on campus. And I hope that people are proud of the way that I represent my college uh, because I'm certainly proud to have been a UCLA Bruin and uh, proud of all those students that chose to go there and, and more importantly that, that got in because it's not an easy thing yeah. to have happen. The great Troy Aikman. Hey, continued success, buddy. I'm sorry we're doing this by Zoom, but uh, it beats the alternative. Thanks again. You got it. Thanks so much. Back to you, Danielle. Troy Aikman, everybody, a UCLA Bruin, and still so connected to us. So we're so grateful uh, that he got to come on and talk to you guys today. Now let's give away some more gift cards. All right, show me some names. And there they are. Congratulations, you just won a Ralph's gift card. Uh, now let's take it over to some heavy hitters. From UCLA baseball, it's Matt McLean, and from UCLA softball, Malia Quarles. Hey, it's Matt McLean from UCLA Baseball. We love having the support of the UCLA students out at the game every weekend. And to all the new students, make sure you come out and support us out at Jackie this year. We were on a roll last season before our season unfortunately got shut down, but we can't wait for your support this spring. Go Bruins! What's up, Bruin fans? It's Malia Quarles here of the defending champion softball team. Yeah, you heard that right. We're the defending national champions. And guess what? We're about to do it again. We've got not one, but two Olympians returning for their senior seasons, but if you ask me, they're just a couple of goats. Need more reasons why you should support UCLA softball? It's the 13 natties for me. It's the best pitchers in the country for me. It's the power hitting lineup for me at Aaliyah Jordan. It's the softball dynasty for me. You better get your map and find Easton Stadium, ESPN, or whatever you have to do to support because the Bruins, we're gonna bring it, and you do not want to miss out. Go Bruins. All right, now let's see what our favorite mascots, Joe and Josie Bruin, are up to with Westcom. Our goal at Westcom is to make sure we look out for our members' best interest. I think it's great that you two have been saving for retirement. However, I am a bit concerned that you're highly leveraged in one specific industry. Are there any other areas that you might be interested in? <laughs> I understand that you two really like honey. However, there must be something else that you're interested in. We try to make sure we guide our members as best as we can, but at the end of the day, it really is their call. How about the financial sector or the tech sector? It certainly looks like Joe and Josie got their honey's worth from Westcom. And thanks to our friends at Westcom, AKA the proud sponsor of The Den, we are now giving away two Westcom prize packs. And our winners are Taylor GD and Colby Zero. Congratulations, Bruins. And now we're gonna get to talk to a player from a team that will also be competing for a championship next year, the UCLA women's basketball team. This is their leading scorer and leading rebounder from last season, Michaela Onyenwere. Shoot. 
Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, I have been stalking the UCLA women's uh, basketball Twitter, so I know you guys are just getting back onto campus. Is it good to be back in Westwood? Oh, no, yeah. It's really, really fun to see my teammates. And obviously, we're social distancing and doing all that. But, like, it's really really nice to be around the energy of my teammates. I really miss that being home for, like, six months now. Right. Uh, well, in the spirit of social distancing, let's help uh, the new students get to know you a little bit better virtually. So, uh, Michaela, where are you from? I'm from Aurora, Colorado. Okay. And then what's your major? My major is sociology with a minor in African-American studies. Okay, awesome. Any hobbies we should know about? I love to shop. Like, if you ask anybody, like, that'll be like, Michaela, number one, loves to shop. So I would definitely say I love shopping, getting my nails done. Um, over the quarantine, I was kind of into, like, scrapbooking and stuff, so that was pretty fun. Um, I'm into, like, making, like, videos of, like, the experiences we've had and just, like, creating memories, for sure. I think that's so cool that you're like, I love to shop and get my nails done, but you're also, like, such a beast when you're on the court. Um, <laughs> take me back to the end of last season. Tell me about that run leading up to right before COVID shut everything down. Yeah, unfortunately, like you said, COVID did shut everything down, but I feel like we were on such an upskirt um, towards the end of the season. I think we ended the season 26 and five. And so we were, we were in a position to really go far and like, that was a special team last year. And so it was really sad to end, but I know that we would have done great things if the NCAA tournament would have happened. And I was just really excited to be a part of a team that was so fun, so energetic and just such beasts on the court. Yes, yeah, so you guys were so much fun to watch, and it was a really special team. Uh, but what, what can we expect uh, moving forward from the team once UCLA women's basketball is back in action? Of course. I think you can expect an adaptable team. Uh, we, we don't know what the season's going to look like at this point, and so I think that our team is just going to attack every single day with, with confidence and just with a lot of work ethic because we don't know what that, what that season's going to look like. So, I mean, obviously we're hoping that there is a season and we're keeping our fingers crossed, but we're just, you're just going to see a team that's full of energy, full of adaptability, and just a lot of energy. For sure. And uh, you guys are full of energy. And I obviously know the answer to this question, but let these new students know why should they want to come sit in the den and be at your guys' basketball games? Because not only are we like really good on the court, <laughs> I can say that, but I feel like we just have great team personality. Like, you're going to see that on, on the court. You're going to see that on the bench. You're going to see that through our introductions. You're just going to see a real, real live entertainment when you come to our games. And so I think that's, that's enough for, for everybody to come and show up and support. And it does, on top of that, like we've been a, really, a top team for the last couple of years that I've been here. We've been to Sweet 16s. We've been to Elite 8. So very exciting kind of fun thing to come to and come support us for. Yes, yeah, Sweet 16s, Elite 8s, tell them. And you guys have racked the crowd a lot. You guys give what like high fives at the end of the game yeah we do we do so i mean if you want to just have a little interaction with the women's basketball team then our games are definitely the place to be for sure and uh of course lastly michaela a lot has been going on this year obviously from the pandemic to the protests so we just want to make sure that we're giving all the student athletes a platform to speak on any causes that are uh important to them anything they're passionate about anything you want to speak on yeah of course so i'm actually a part of the newly found Black Student Athlete Alliance on campus. And so I'm very excited for everybody to see what we've been working on. This is a group that started during the pandemic. And so I'm excited to kind of be back on campus to be able to interact with people who are in the group. But it does give us a platform as athletes to use our voices to elicit change and bring awareness to the racial and social injustices that are happening in this country that are unfortunate and that we have been seeing as a nation. So I'm very proud to, see, to say that I'm in the group and very excited for Bruin Nation to be able to um, see what we've been working on next. For sure. And, and I've said it before and I'll say it again. Uh, I wish that when I was little, I had uh, you guys to look up to. Uh, when I have kids, I'm going to have uh, my daughter and my son watching uh, UCLA women's basketball because you guys uh, just really do it right. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today, Michaela. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate it. All right, Michaela, are you ready for our rapid fire? I am ready for the rapid fire. Okay. Favorite dining hall? Cafe 19. Okay, favorite building on campus? Poly Pavilion. Uh, favorite UCLA sport other than yours? Softball. Softball, okay. Uh, favorite Westwood spot to eat? Boiling crab. Okay, she's fast. Uh, number one thing that new UCLA students have to do when they get to Westwood? Come to UCLA women's basketball game. I love it, perfect, <laughs> A plus. Thanks so much, Michaela. Of course. Thanks again, Michaela, for joining us. And reminder, Bruins, you can go to those UCLA women's basketball games with just your Bruin card. How easy is that? Uh, now I think it's time that we give away more prizes. So show me some names for some winners. All right, 
congratulations, you've won a UCLA prize pack. And uh, now we're gonna throw it to our next guest who is very familiar with winning. Uh, he has a larger than life personality and he's seven feet tall. He's won multiple championships with the Bruins and he played for legendary coach, John Wooden. Do you guys know who I'm talking about? Let's bring him out, Bill Walton. Hail to the hills of <laughs> Westwood. Okay. okay. I All love right. UCLA. It was as great a decision as I've ever made in my life, as important a decision as I've ever made in my life. My older brother went to UCLA. My wife went to UCLA. Some of our children went to UCLA. All of our best friends went to UCLA. And I am proud, honored, privileged to be here today to help celebrate the greatness of UCLA. I love UCLA. Hail to the hills of Westwood. All right, so for those of you who don't know Bruin fans, uh, you may recognize this man from some Pac-12 basketball broadcasts, maybe as a two-time NCAA champion under legendary coach John Wooden, maybe as three times National College Player of the Year. Uh, or if you're just like my dad, you recognize him as the best college player of all time. Bill Walton. Bill, thanks so much for joining us. Daniel, I'm just lucky to be here. I went to UCLA. It was 46 years ago that I graduated. It seems like it was yesterday. It was phenomenal experience for me and to see all the new faces coming in, to see the future. Because when you're old and in the way like I am, you think about, okay, what can we do to help the next generation save us from ourselves? Because UCLA is the greatest place on earth. It is so beautiful. The people there are phenomenal. And the location, right in the middle of everything. And so what we need to do is have this generation take charge of everything to be able to create their dreams, to build their lives, to build their network so that they can step to the front and say, we'll take care of this. We are UCLA Bruins. Here we go. Now, you mentioned that this is the best campus on earth. On that campus, there's a statue of John Wooden. Can you tell us what Coach Wooden meant to you and, and what these future UCLA students can learn from him? John Wooden was a rare and different dude, a spiritual force of nature like few others. He was a guy who was an English teacher by profession who used to have young men under his athletic supervision in the afternoon. He took his <laughs> job very seriously. He taught us how to learn, he taught us how to think, he taught us how to build our lives, and he taught us how to compete. And it was incredibly positive, optimistic, and fun. And he built on the tradition and the history and the legacy of the people who came before him. And so this was a situation at UCLA, and as the new students will learn, as they study the history of our great university, they're going to find out that all the best things in life started at UCLA. And you go back to the people like Ralph Bunch and Jackie Robinson and Don Barksdale and Rayford Johnson and Arthur Ashe and Kareem and all the legends who have come through UCLA to be a part of something so special. My whole dream in life was to be a part of something special. I was John Wooden's easiest recruit. I became his worst nightmare because I always wanted to know why. And I drove the poor guy to an early grave at 99. But what a fantastic human being. What an incredible teacher. And that's what we have at UCLA. We have incredible everything. We have physical facilities. We have human beings. We have dynamic business entrepreneurs. We have the people who have generated what we already have. And you, as the new attendees of UCLA, you are responsible for our future. And we can't wait. Bill, last question for you. What advice can you give to these incoming students? Best advice for them? Do everything. Try everything. Live a life of curiosity, exploration, and experimentation. Know how to build a life. Know how to find your way forward. The best thing to do is to find a teacher, a coach. It's been your parents so far, but it's going to be somebody that you're going to choose. This is the decision-making time of your life. And so you find that teacher, you join a team, nobody makes it to the top alone. You immerse yourself in the culture. There's no culture like UCLA. And then you build your own personal foundation. 
And understanding that group dynamic, group success works when you live a life of honor, sacrifice, and discipline. But go to every class, go to every lecture, go to every movie, be on campus all the time, go to bed early. When things fall apart, and they will, you got to learn how to recover because life is determined by what happens when the ball bounces the other way. And the great thing about UCLA is that the community spirit and the loyalty and the pride and the gratitude, we all come in full of hope and opportunity and purpose. What you will find at UCLA is the rest of your life and that ability to be able to come together and do something that will forever change the world, that will do something that has never been done. UCLA, the greatest place on earth. There's no place else even close, no place else even like it. I went there with incredibly high hopes. This was 50 years ago that I started. I went there thinking it was going to be perfect. It so far exceeded my expectations, and it was just the greatest time of my life. And your challenge as new students are to make your life as great as it possibly can be. The things that we think back in life, the things that we say, man, I wish I could have done better. Think of the phrase, all the things I tried to do, but only did halfway. Don't be afraid to get into the game and live a life where you are constantly telling yourself, I can't finish what I don't start. Exactly. Never measure yourself by what you have done, but rather by what you could have or should have been able to do. It takes talent to get to the top. It takes character to stay there. You have the character. You've made the choice. You are now a UCLA Bruin. You are ready for the rest of everything. I love you, CLA. Hail oh. the hills of Westwood. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bill. You and are a UCLA waste legend. Anything. Don't waste time. Don't waste resources. Don't sit there on the couch watching TV, waiting for the game of life to come to you. Get out there and start going for it all. Wow. Uh, well, you can't ask for better advice. Bill, thank you so much. You're a wealth of knowledge, and we're so grateful that we got to hear some of it today. Time management. To be <laughs> the champion, I got a chance. UCLA gave me a chance. They gave me that opportunity to be a part of something special. But it was my responsibility to make the most out of that chance. And I always look back at the things I didn't get done. And the question I ask myself, if only, if only I had done something different. But I made the right choice, and that was to go to UCLA. I'm the luckiest right. guy in the world. Hail to the hills of Westwood. Thank you, UCLA, for my life. Go Bruins. <laughs> go Bruins. Here we go. Thanks so much again to Bill. You guys, Bill Walton is a riot. You're going to see him at basketball games, throwing t-shirts into the stands, hopefully soon when he's back to broadcasting. Uh, if Bill Walton can't make you smile, then I, I don't know. We, we have a lot of really good neuroscientists at UCLA, so we'll figure it out. But in the meantime, uh, I'll bring out our first guest from the UCLA football team. It's our star quarterback, Dorian Thompson Robinson. All my life, been running all my life. Sacrifice, hustle pay the price. Want to slice. All right, Bruin fans, if you don't know who this is, you will shortly. This is DTR, Dorian Thompson Robinson. It does not stand for down to run, even though he has been known to do that on occasion. Uh, DTR, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? 
I'm so good. Uh, so tell me, what advice do you have for these incoming Bruins? Man, live, live life. Uh, you're in college, you know, you only get this time once and you only get these four to five years once. So, you know, enjoy it and uh, definitely live life while you're here. So. And now uh, I know you were obviously heavily recruited, uh, Arizona, Arizona State, Michigan, you name it. What made you want to come to UCLA and be a Bruin? Uh, I think it speaks for itself, the, the academics, the alumni, the networking, the, the school itself and the campus. Um, you know, you get everything you need here in terms of resources. So I think that's one of the biggest things why I chose UCLA. What was the, the most surprising thing when you moved in? Was there anything shocking to you when you first got to college? <laughs> um, yeah, so I was never really into, like when I came on my business, I was never really into the dorm life and wanting to see the dorm. So kind of getting used to living in a dorm and kind of living in right. such a small area for so long, it was kind of weird to me, so. Uh, is there anything that uh, you especially love about going to UCLA? Uh, anywhere on campus you like to go? Mm, anywhere on campus I like to go. Blaze Pizza. Blaze By far pizza. The best pizza I've ever had, Blaze Pizza. Okay, and so for students who haven't been to maybe a UCLA football game, what can they expect when they finally get to go to the Rose Bowl? Uh, fun, exciting, and a winning atmosphere. Uh, I think when you, get, when you finally get to the Rose Bowl and you finally get to see us play, um, you're definitely going to feel the energy on the field and it's going to relate back to you. So, What's been your experience with the UCLA fans so far? Uh, so far, so good. Um, you know, I haven't had any, any bad experiences so far, and um, hopefully I won't in the future, too. So, <laughs> I meant, like, was there anything specifically good, but yes, that's good. I'm glad nobody has given you too hard of a time. Uh, and, of course, we, we do want to ask you, uh, all the student athletes, we know it's been a tough year. Uh, so if there's anything, any causes or anything that you want to share with your incoming uh, Bruins? Um, I said the biggest thing, and, and the biggest thing that football is doing right now is to, to go vote. So, um, you know, let your voice be heard. Even if you don't think it matters or not, um, speak out as much as you can and, and uh, definitely, uh, you know, go vote and, and tell and get other people to vote too. So, Awesome. Well, thanks so much for uh, your time, DTR, and we can't wait to see you back in the Rose Bowl and on campus. Thank you. All right, DTR, it's time for our rapid fire questions. Number one, favorite dining hall? F. All right, favorite building on campus? Uh, Ackerman. Okay, favorite UCLA sport other than football? Tennis. Tennis, okay, didn't expect that one. Favorite Westwood spot to eat? Favorite Westwood spot to eat? Um, Amy's, the sushi spot down, down in the Westwood Village. Okay, he likes sushi. And uh, last one, number one thing that new students must do when they get to UCLA. Um, don't say Diddy Reese. Please don't say Diddy Reese. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. Definitely not. Uh, that's tough. That's tough. That's tough. Um, my favorite thing, thing three dollar bazookis on Tuesdays. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right. <laughs> All right, DTR, thanks so much for joining us today. We, we can't wait to see you back on the field and hopefully on campus. Thank you so much. My name is Chase Griffin. I'm a quarterback here, a second year public affairs major. I vote to honor the work of those who have come before me to make it possible for me to do so. It's also in our DNA as Bruins to push culture forward. From Jackie Robinson to Jackie Joyner Kersey, UCLA has always been the home of social pioneers. In this spirit, we have a duty to carry the torch and maximize social progress, winning on and off the field. Spearheaded by our new AD, Martin Jarman, the Voting Matters Initiative encapsulates what it means to be a Bruin. Not only are we using our voice at the voting polls, but through civic engagement, we're giving back to our communities. In California, early voting opens October 5th. Get registered, exercise your right to vote early, and fours up. Go Bruins. Thanks, Chase. Great advice. Make sure everybody registers to vote. Bruins, make sure that your voice is heard. Now, we couldn't have all of UCLA's amazing athletic teams here today to show you guys, but let's take a look at some of the other great teams that you guys can support.
pose, yeah, pose, pose, yeah, pose. I am a photo shoot pose. I am my him pose, yeah, pose, pose, yeah, pose, pose, yeah, pose, pose, yeah, pose. I am a photo shoot pose. Hey yo, softball check. Them bottles in the ice, like a blizzard. When we drink, we do it right. Getting slizzard, sipping scissor in my ride. In my ride, like three six. Now I'm. Uh, now, before we sign off, a couple quick reminders. When we finally are able to be back on campus and going to these sporting events, my best advice to you is go. It's gonna be so much fun to be in the den. You never know who you might meet. It might be lifelong friends. It's, it's one of the best experiences in college, truly. Uh, and make sure you follow the den on social media also. It's a great organization on campus to stay up to date with. And plus, they're gonna give out more prizes after this. They just like to give out prizes all the time. So make sure you follow the den. Uh, and without further ado, thanks so much for joining us at Champed Up. Shout out to Rouse for the gift cards. This is gonna be the greatest adventure of your life that you're starting right here. You got into the number one public university in the country four years running, all right? From now on, you're a Bruin. So get excited and go Bruins.